Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Amy Hayes, and I'm an occupational therapist with Michigan Rehabilitation Services with the state of Michigan. Next slide, please. Before we begin today's presentation, please know that the presentation materials are available on the ADA 30 virtual events page at www.michigan.gov forward slash ADA 30. During the presentation, please put questions or any comments in the chat box. We highly encourage everyone to utilize the chat feature during the presentation to ask questions. That can be addressed by our team behind the scenes. If time does not allow to answer all the questions and comments, follow-up will be provided after training. Resources and contact information will also be sent to all registered attendees following the training. As far as accessibility, Zoom offers information regarding the accessible features on their platform at https colon forward slash forward slash zoom dot us forward slash accessibility or their toll free number at 1-888-799-9500. If you are unable to access the chat with assistive technology during the presentation, please utilize the resource information provided following the training to address your question. Next slide, please. So again, good afternoon and thank you for joining us today as we continue with the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity Series in October to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the ADA. Today's session will feature the Michigan Occupation, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. This session will include information on safety and health standards that have provisions for employees with disabilities. Before we get started today, we are thrilled to have recorded statement offered by the acting director of the Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity, Susan Corbin, celebrating the history of the ADA 30 and the state of Michigan's proactive efforts to increase inclusivity in all facets of life. Good afternoon. I'm thrilled to join the conclusion of the Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunities month long efforts to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the signing of the Americans with Disability Act. Leo has many direct connections to the ADA. I'm glad we've spent every Thursday shining a light on that work and what it means for both individuals and businesses in Michigan. This month, we've shared our numerous programs, resources, and opportunities that aim to promote and support equity and access for all. We've kicked off the month by highlighting our vocational rehabilitation programs, the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons and Michigan Rehab Services, and all the ways they are supporting others in overcoming barriers. That was followed by workforce development, explaining all the ways the Michigan Works agencies are complying with the non-discrimination and equal opportunity provisions of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Then the Michigan State Housing Development Authority explained the work they do during development projects to incorporate features to assist individuals with disabilities to, in overcoming physical barriers. Our Workers' Disability Compensation Agency explained that it was the first social program to recognize the value of workers with limitations by providing post-industrial job accommodations to return to pre-injury employment. This morning, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation touted all the accessible travel opportunities we have throughout our state. And lastly, in just a few moments, you'll learn how the Michigan Occupational Safety and Health Administration has provisions for employees with disabilities within their safety and health standards. 
I hope this month's ADA 30 presentations piqued your interest in the various ways Leo is supporting all Michiganders. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website, michigan.gov forward slash Leo. Please enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you again to Acting Director Corbin for her thoughts to get us started today. And now I would like to introduce Lawrence Hidalgo. He is the Director of Construction Safety and Health Division under the Michigan Occupational Safety and Health Administration, MIOSHA. Take it away, Lawrence. Thank you, Amy, and welcome everyone to this afternoon's presentation. Uh, I'm, I always enjoy be uh, getting a chance to talk about MIOSHA and our mission. And we have a lot of great employees, great team that work uh, to help keep workers in Michigan safe and healthy. Uh, next slide. So that's our mission. Uh, we, we want to help protect the safety and health of Michigan workers. We're protecting people at work, our families, friends, neighbors, fellow citizens. We wish that everyone to go home unharmed at the end of every work shift. Next slide. So to give you a background about my OSHA, uh, OSHA was started in, in, uh, in federal OSHA, Occupational Health and Safety and Health Administration, started in the early 1970s. And what they did is they gave every state the chance to have their own state program. If not, then the, the federal government will come in and run their OSHA program. So in Michigan, we were one of those that chose to run our own state program. And you can, uh, you can see on the slide those that have states and those that have federal programs. Uh, next slide, please. Also, our motto is to educate before we regulate. We're gonna talk about a number of standards that we have in MIOSHA that employers and employees need to follow. And we wanna make sure that employers understand uh, what are they supposed to do to keep their, their workers safe and healthy. Next slide. One of the most important divisions, and we have five divisions within MIOSHA, one of the most important is our consultation, education, and training uh, services division. They do a lot of different things to help educate uh, our employers and employees, and most of it is at no charge. So it's uh, statewide, they have consultation services, education, training, private and public se sectors. They'll come in and do safety and health audits. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about the enforcement divisions, but when SAC comes in to do a safety and health audit, uh, there's no citations, no penalties when they find things. They wanna work with the employers and address safety and health issues and get them fixed. Uh, they also have cooperative programs, a number of those, and then training, a uh, biggie, with the MIOSHA Training Institute. And a lot of that's been converted to online training, uh, which is very useful during uh, pandi pandemic times like now. And they also will come to on-site training. They'll actually come and, and provide the training right there uh, to your employers. Next slide, please. So I mentioned the enforcement. Those are two, two of our other divisions. One is the construction and one's general industry. When uh, the two divisions come out, their safety and health professionals are looking at, uh, are the employees following the standards that MIOSHA has to help keep uh, workers safe and healthy? If they're not, 
then we will issue citations for violations of our standards. And along with that will generally be a penalty assessment, a dollar amount to go with that. Next slide. Oh, another neat thing we have is uh, my wish grants created in 2015. These grants would give employers uh, a matching grant up to $5,000 to help uh, purchase uh, safety and health equipment or training as, as the employer needs. These are for small employers, less than 250 employees in high hazard industries like construction. And uh, SET division administrates those grants and there was $250,000 uh, for fiscal year 2019. So if you're an employer and you need some funds to help purchase equipment or training, uh, here's a source for you. Next slide. So right now you're looking at a uh, snapshot, it's a photo of our website. And it's just a snapshot of some of the standards that apply to general industry. And just so you understand, construction industry deals with anything involving construction, residential through industry. Uh, we also deal with uh, asbestos and uh, road construction and, and generally maintenance as well in the roads. Anything else that is MIOSHA covered is handled by the general industry division. So when you look at what, it, uh, and, and we'll use this as an example for general industry, uh, some of the things they have for safety of employees is like part three, GI part three is fixed ladders. If employees are using fixed ladders, how do, how do they need to be installed? Um, you know, the distance between rungs. Is there a cage that needs to be, go around a fixed ladder because of certain height? So you would come to this standard to find out what do you need to do as an employer? Now, again, most standards won't apply to all employers. So if you're new, if you've never worked with MyOSHA, again, contact that set department. They will come out and look at what you're doing They'll do that survey or audit, and then they'll walk through you with the uh, various standards that would apply to your operations. And then they would provide the training uh, that would go along with it. So general industry has 64 safety standards. Next slide. Here's, here's uh, again, a snapshot of the general industry health standards, just some of them, because there's 38 standards altogether. And you can look at the different types of chemicals that um, employees may work with. So if they're working with formaldehyde, that's a part 306. And you would want to look at this uh, standard to see what you need to do as an employer to keep your employees healthy from these risks. Next slide. In construction, we're not as big and we don't have as many standards. Here's a photo of uh, the construction, some of the construction stand, standards. These are the safety. Uh, there's 33 of those safety standards. Uh, we, we cover all kinds of items in the construction industry. Uh, we have our general rules and part two is masonry wall bracing, part six, which is the biggie, the personal protective equipment you may know as PPE. So again, if uh, you're doing construction, you want to come to the website. All these standards are on the website. Uh, you can download them for free. And then we have the health standards. So next slide. We have 27 health standards. 
And those are all listed uh, again on our website. This is just a snapshot of some of those. Uh, lead was uh, a biggie that we worked in the last few years to update the standards for lead and how much exposure an employee could have. The last one there, 690, is silica. That's a fairly new standard. We know that silica has uh, very harmful health uh, effects and has um, had a number of deaths over the years. And we finally have a standard in place for employers. Our next slide, please. So again, there's a lot of MIOSHA standards. However, not all apply to every business. So you, please contact our set division, consultation, education, and train division at their number, 517-284-7720. Uh, if you would like them to come out and help you with your business, or if you're, if you're an employee and you want information, they will also help you out. So feel free to give them a call as well. Uh, also, um, employees have the right to file complaints if their employer is not providing the safety and health measures needed. Uh, they can do that online. And then uh, if they file a valid complaint, uh, generally someone will be contacting them to discuss it uh, with them. On next slide. And then employers need to, one, post this poster, and you can download that free, no, no charge, from our website. Uh, the employees have a right to, to know uh, what they're dealing with as far as um, hazardous materials. So uh, generally, this information would be found on safety data seat sheets. And if you've been around before, it used to be MSDSs, material safety uh, data sheets the material has been dropped. And on the safety data sheets, it talks about the harmful effects of whatever chemical the person's working with and what kind of first aid measures would be taken if they've been exposed to the chemicals. Materials need to be labeled so employees know what they're working with. You, um, just can't give them a bottle of something with no labeling. And there needs to be training. Uh, involved with it. So the employees know ahead of time if there's an exposure, what to do. Next slide. And there are, there are uh, injury and illness reporting and posting requirements. If you're not familiar with those in your business, please call that set division. They'll work with you. But in MIOSHA, if there's a work-related amputation, loss of an eye, or inpatient hospitalization, that needs to be reported to MIOSHA within 24 hours. Fatalities have to be reported to us within eight hours. So those are two key dead, uh, deadlines that have to be met. Next slide. So for this presentation, uh, our, our employees, the MIOSHA employees, are also uh, protected by uh, the MIOSHA Act. So in MIOSHA, we have to treat our employees the same as we expect all other employees um, to protect their employees. And I talked earlier about the um, uh, employees that go out into the field, whether it be the consultation services division or construction or GI, they're going out into the workplace too. And they're looking to see if there's any hazards, uh, safety and health. So we have to make sure that our employees have the proper PE, PPE, respiratory. They may need to wear um, suits, boots, gloves. Um, for their health, uh, especially in, with dealing with COVID and, and being out there. So uh, they have uh, face masks to wear. And so 
again, we're working to keep our employees safe as, as well. Next slide. So for my OSHA employees, um, one of the things we uh, look at is the ergonomics for our employees. Uh, if a person needs adjustments at their, uh, most of us work out of cubicles, if at their desk they need modifications, up or down, different size desks to accommodate, we'll, we'll take care of that. Uh, one of the things that was purchased a few years ago was the Vera desk, where it sits on your desk and with a lever you can lift the, the desk up and down to accommodate folks who may need to sit for a while and then stand for a while. Um, so we, we purchased those for our employees and we will get chairs as needed to help accommodate folks um, that uh, need a different chair. Or, uh, and, and then also we've made physical accommodations such as for folks who may have a hearing impairment, whether it be phone systems, uh, we have an agency meeting uh, every year where we get all our employees together and, and talk about great things we've done in the last year or information they need to know. And we will have interpreters at our agency meetings, making sure we're accommodating employees. Uh, next slide. And, and then also, you know, the ergonomics. Um, if uh, employees, we don't have a standard for that in Myosha, but we will come out and we will try to help employers to accommodate their workers. So we'll give recommendations um, and try to work with the employer to help accommodate the, their employees as well. So I talked earlier about our standards I and mean, if we issue citations uh, and generally there's penalty, financial penalties involved with that. Employers have the right to file an appeal with my um, OSHA and generally they'll wanna come in and talk to us about those appeals. So we looked at the physical accommodations. Uh, we move, we're, we're currently in the Stephen Mason building in Lansing. We moved in there in 2016. The, 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 our offices were remodeled before we moved in and we had uh, the ADA consultants work with our uh, folks on designing our office space to make sure that um, we were ADA compliant with all of our office uh, offices in this Mason building. So our office buildings barrier free we let uh, employers, we, we ask the employers if there's any additional accommodations we need to make for them, let us know. Uh, we, we will make sure to the best we can that that's happened. Uh, we've also helped people in the past uh, do like this, a telephone or Zoom meeting to accommodate folks who had needs. Uh, getting into the office might not be uh, easy for them to do. And of course we had practice with that. So now with uh, COVID and, and trying to stay at home as much as possible, work from home, uh, we're getting really good at the Zoom meetings and teams and such. And, and again, for the employers and or employees that come in to meet with us if need be, we can also have a sign language interpreter for those folks. Next slide. We also work with uh, standards and, and a lot of our standards in the past were very specific. Employers had to do this, A, B, C. Our standards over time are starting to move to more performance standards. And it, it allows the employer to decide what is the best for the employee in this situation, as long as it meets uh, a minimum safety standard of protecting their employee from the hazard. So the, uh, this again allows employers to tailor 
safety and health uh, around their employees that may need to do something a little bit different than what others might be doing. Uh, another standard that we deal with, and we do a lot of uh, road work, looking at uh, hazards for workers um, that are in traffic situations. So the MMUTCD, Michigan Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, uh, and they are there uh, have provisions for ADA, such as if, if they're doing work on a road and there's a sidewalk, they have to create ramps for folks who may need a ramp to get from the road work to the sidewalk. So they have provisions throughout there to make accommodations where uh, making sure that uh, citizens can uh, continue on moving down roads and sidewalks while there's construction work going on. And again, on the ergonomics, I mentioned we don't actually have a standard, but we will uh, evaluate and write safety recommendations uh, for employers and employees. Um, next slide. So this next slide lists the Myosha resources. Um, and we, we have each of the divisions uh, phone numbers here. And um, also hopefully you never need it, but the fatal fatality hotline and the severe injury report lines are listed here as well. Another thing that Michigan does is we have a radiation safety section. We have folks that actually uh, go out and check the x-ray machines, whether they be at dental offices or hospitals, the, the large machines, as well as things like the mammography machines. So my, my OSHA uh, goes out and checks those various uh, devices uh, for uh, our safety. I'll show our website, which has lots of resources for you. It's michigan.gov forward slash MIOSHA, M-I-O-S-H-A. Uh, we also have, uh, well, maybe that's on the next slide. Let's, let's look at the next slide. So yeah, uh, you can subscribe uh, on our website for our MIOSHA uh, newsletter. Um, and we give you a lot of good information in the newsletter for employer, employers and employees. So feel free to subscribe to that at no charge. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and we even have a YouTube channel uh, where we're trying to put uh, success stories uh, out there for folks to view. And uh, I, I think that's very helpful. Oh, and by the way, the set division also has uh, videos and a lot of videos uh, online and uh, physical. If you need those to help with training, feel free to uh, request those from set division. And our next slide. Okay, so um, I want to thank you for coming out and listening to our story. I've, I've been with my OSHA for five and a half years now and just love it. I love our mission and all we do to help keep uh, Michigan workers safety and safe and uh, healthy. So Amy, I think we're ready for Q&A. All right, this is Amy speaking. Thank you, Lawrence. That was great information for all of us. Um, Eric, are there any questions in the chat that we can entertain Lawrence with? Yes, I've been keeping up on most of them. There's uh, one right now that says I uh, can training classes be offered in person specific to my business's needs. Well, the answer is yes, that certainly can happen. And uh, with, with uh, this COVID, we're, we're trying to do as much uh, remote as possible. However, there are times you need us to come to your facility uh, and present the training. We'll, we'll work with you and make sure we've got social, social distancing, that our people are wearing their masks, that uh, you know we're, we're protecting employees as well from COVID. So 
But yes, that certainly is an option at this time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Does MyOSHA use ADA architectural guidelines in their practices too? Um, I, I'm not sure um, really what the what the question is getting to, Eric. Uh, may, whoever asked that question, maybe you can give me a little bit more so we can uh, make sure I'm answering your your question correctly. So, Eric, while they're doing that, why don't you uh, go to the next question, if you would? And by the way. Um, Eric Allen is our safety manager in construction. He's been with MyOSHA for, well, Eric, has it been 15 years? 12 years. 12 years. So he, he's got a lot of knowledge too, and I may have him, depending on the question, jump in and answer as well. So thanks for being with us, Eric. So one of the questions that I answered was, uh, uh, if an employee is concerned at their workplace that it's not safe, what should they do? Would you recommend that they start talking with their supervisor or go right to my OSHA? Uh, so my answer on this one was an employee can choose to talk with their employer or, or go straight to file a complaint with my OSHA. Uh, if you have any concerns or want to talk about the specific nature of your concerns, you can call the construction division or the general industry division. Yeah, that's a good answer, Eric. And First, let me let you know that if a, an employee files a complaint, they can do it anonymously if they wish. First, you can always call just to discuss. Uh, but you know, if you feel comfortable speaking to your supervisor about it, uh, certainly I, I would suggest you consider that as well. If you can handle it right there at the local level, that's great. But don't hesitate to call us if you have questions. Um, and again, if you file a complaint, an employee files a complaint, it can be done uh, anonymously. Um, and just remember, if you're an employer and your employee exercises their rights under the MIOSH uh, Act, you can't retaliate against them. Uh, you can't fire them, demote them, withhold pay, uh, you, you can't do that. And we do have a division that will investigate if an employee says, hey, I, I complained about uh, the PPE they were giving us and uh, they let me go. Okay, we have a follow-up to the ADA architectural question and they uh, indicated the rules related to the ADA architectural guidelines. Yeah, Lawrence, this is uh, um, the ADA accessibility, accessibility Guidelines. It's also known as the ADAG. They have standards and rules for accessibility. Um, it's a document that contains uh, scoping and technical requirements for accessibility to buildings and facilities uh, for individuals with mm -hmm. disabilities. So it looks at um, parking lots, uh, number yeah. of accessible spaces, routes, uh, public bathrooms, uh, making sure they're accessible for all. Oh, thanks, Amy. And that's something that the set division is involved with. Um, I know our staff at MRS is uh, requested at times to do the ADAG evaluations. Yes. So, uh, no. Um, Myosha's not involved uh, okay. in that. Uh, we're, we're really uh, going out and looking at the health and safety uh, standards and complying. And so even though we're at, in a uh, construction area and getting out to buildings under construction, we're just looking at uh, the safety and health of the employees, uh, not the ADA. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. Yes, the set division also, I know they've been very busy, busy uh, with COVID and the pandemic and addressing businesses' needs. 
Um, what's the turnaround time generally um, on average for the consultants to respond to a inquiry or a question for them to come out and have a either a virtual consultation or on-site consultation? Sure. So the uh, the virtual consultation will certainly happen quicker than the on-site. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have the ability, uh, employers, employees, to do an Ask My OSHA question. And you can go right to our website, and there's a, a link to get you to the Ask My OSHA. Type in a question, and we generally answer those within one or two days. Nice. So and pretty quick turnaround time. Yes, but uh, getting someone out to actually do some training is going to take a little bit longer. Um, and they may prioritize as well. So, you know, if, if your needs are different than someone else's, maybe they can put, you know, make an adjustment to the schedule. But, um, yeah, so it's not going to happen tomorrow if you need them to come out right. to do training. I just wondered if it was, you know, yeah. a two or three week turnaround or what you have been seeing um, with COVID and the pandemic. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't know. During normal times, two to, two to three months might be normal for setting up uh, training on site. Okay. Uh, during COVID, I, I don't know. I know they're trying to do a lot of it virtually. Yes, that's the safest way right now. Yes. Okay, Eric, are there other uh, questions that you answer that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, we still have two right here. Uh, let's see, okay, for great. compliance purposes or incident reports related to access, does Myosha apply these rules as well? Uh, so for for access, I'm assuming this is to uh, like buildings. Uh, we would not have uh, no. authority in that situation. And the other uh, question is, how is my OSHA approaching PPE related to employees with pre-existing medical conditions who may have difficulty, for example, wearing a mask? Okay, that's, that's a great question. So uh, if, if it's, uh, you know, specifically the face mask itself that an employee for medical reasons can't wear, uh, w one of the best thing is can the employee do a job that they're always socially distanced, at least six feet away from someone else, so they're not coming in, coming in contact with others. Um, you know, if, if that's not available, then there's other options and Eric's feel free to step in, but you know, there's the hoods that provide, uh, you know, air uh, underneath the hood. That might be a way to protect that employee. Um, uh, Eric's also an industrial hygienist. And so he would know more in this area than I would. Um, any other suggestions, Eric? Yeah, the uh, the specific type of respirator, if you're looking for that, if you if you have difficulty wearing physically wearing, is a it's called a powered air purifying respirator, and it's similar to what you see uh, what a blasting helmet is, and that's where the air gets blown over the top of your head so that there's no interference uh, with your lung capacity or on your face, um, and you're you're still able to breathe and it keeps contaminants out. There's a typically a, either a battery pack on your belt with a filter system or the unit is actually in the back of the helmet itself. And with that, uh, it protects the employees from any harmful uh, contaminants regarding the filter usage as well. Yeah, so this is a good, great area to contact SET and they could probably even do some, do it virtually and look at what is your situation mm -hmm. with that employee and then be better able to offer some alternatives to help keep that employee safe. We have one more question in the queue. Do you have safety ambassadors? <laughs> uh, yes, we do. Uh, and uh, 
the the safety ambassadors right now are coming out of the set division and um, so great question and you should hear even more about the safety ambassadors soon that is all the questions that we have in the queue all right thank you eric yeah thanks eric all right uh thank you lawrence very much uh so thank you for attending today this concludes the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunities series on the ADA 30. If you are interested in viewing any of the events or materials from the events, please visit www.michigan.gov forward slash ADA 30, where you can view videos and resources on past events by clicking directly on the event in the upcoming events section at the bottom of the page. And just as a reminder, the ADA 30 events will be continuing with featuring different departments. And again, they're typically on Thursdays. Please check the website for the schedule. Next slide. Thank you to our panelists for providing their expertise during today's session. Thank you to the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. And thank you so much to our ASL interpreters Toy Bogan and Bethany James. Today's virtual session and captioning has been graciously coordinated by Annette Blau of Q&A Reporting Incorporated. And the last slide here shows Lawrence's contact information with Myosha. Again, he's the Director, Construction, Safety and Health Division. Hidalgo L at michigan.gov or free, feel free to reach him at 517-284-7681. Thanks for joining us this afternoon and stay well.